How's it, Lima? Aloha. Thank you. Uh, basically, you know, I, I think w- w- people think of, you know, fighters like BJ Penn or something when they talk about Hawaiian fighting pioneers. But as far as fighting Hawaiians or people fighting for Hawaii and a pioneer in that regard, no disrespect to any other Native Hawaiians with their efforts that I'm not being mentioned here, but it's hard to hold a candle to how much you have done. I know having a promotion like Bellator that helps allow you express yourself in media, walkouts, et cetera, helps. But can you speak on where that, where you hold, you know, being a, a, a fighter for Hawaii as opposed to being a champion, both are great, but how do they rank in your heart? Um, I'm so happy that you mentioned Bellator really giving me this platform and being supportive. I'm not sure how it is with other organizations, but I do feel like, you don't have that autonomy or support that Bellator provides me. Um, you know, almost to the point where during um, the Mauna Kea protest, I told Bellator, I was like, hey, I'm going up to Mauna Kea. I don't know if, um, you know, anything crazy is going to happen. Like this is when they were arresting the Kupuna and um, Bellator. They're like, OK, well, if you get arrested, we'll help bail you out. I'm like, OK, cool. I'm on my way. So Just having that support from them has definitely, I I think, kind of um, definitely catapulted me into that um, realm. And um, yeah, I just I'm very grateful to have this platform to continue to fight for issues that I hold dear to my heart. And again, I don't know how it is fighting for other organizations, but I, I do feel that maybe other fighters if they had the autonomy, then maybe they would, um, they would also. And curious, obviously I, I can only express so much as media, but whether it's media fighters, people in the space or just your, you know, native Hawaiians, do you get a lot of positive and people expressing uh, the, the positivity, the emotion that it means to have somebody representing causes that maybe aren't widely known, but are very important to us? Yes. And you know, when you're in the public spotlight you are under so much scrutiny um it doesn't matter what you do you're always going to have haters you're always going to have trolls and people who don't believe you or just people that have something negative to say but for every negative remark or anything that i've heard or felt i get tenfold in love and support, you know, and, and that's why I always say Hawaii, we hands down, I can say this so confidently, Hawaii has the best support system and I've had nothing but positive, overwhelming messages. Um, you know, especially when I shared my story, uh, of what happened, um, when I was younger. And so, yeah, the, the support has been overwhelming and I credit Hawaii for that for just being the best support system there is. Absolutely. And it's good to know you're getting the positive reinforcement for these good things. Um, but focusing why we're here, the fight, I don't want to, oh, yeah. Fo- yeah, I don't want to focus too much on the number you gave as far as, you know, maybe two, we'll see your plan. Because when I look at you as a fighter or your socials to see what you're up to, you look focused, you look in great shape. You're training with high level partners as usual coaches. Um, you seem very passionate. So sometimes when you hear fighters mention their plans, they can be accused of having one foot out the door, but by your actions, it doesn't seem that way. Do you, do you have everything compartmentalized? Do you feel in your head going into this? Um, I, I don't know. I, I think, yeah, like you said, one foot in one foot out, um, every fight. And and honestly, throughout my whole career, that's kind of how I felt like I was going into every fight. I was like, Ooh, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. That was literally every fight. Like even when I was going for the belt, even when I got the belt, you know, at the peak of my career, I'm like, uh, yeah, I don't think I want to do this. And so I think I've always kind of had that mindset throughout the entirety of my career. Um, but I am in a phase, I am in a different chapter of my life now and including my personal life where, um, it is coming to a close. Um, and so I just want to finish strong and leave a legacy behind me that it wasn't a fluke that I made it to the top, that I belong at the top and I did the work. I, 
I put in my time to the sport and to the MMA community and I'm respected as a fighter for um, my skills and um, yeah, what I do in the cage as well as outside of the cage. So that's the goal is to finish my career strong. I don't want to finish on a loss um, and, unless it's like for the belt, you know, and, I, and it's a good fight, but I definitely want to end on a good note, even if it's a loss I want it to be a badass fight. Now here. Hey. Hey, Kay Williams for Can Chronicles Media. Your last four fights have been won by decision. Um, how gratifying this Saturday would a fight with a result um, against Montana be, be if it was a KO or a submission? Yep. I, uh, I've been trying to channel that younger Elima that was going for the finishes um, you know, going for the submission wins. And yeah, I, I am kind of disappointed, honestly, that all of my last wins have been by way of decision. Um, because I do pride myself in having the most finishes out of any of the women in the division. And I do pride myself in being a product of 10th planet jujitsu, uh, 10th planet San Diego, where we're always on the hunt for the, for the finish. So I would love, love, love to get back a um, definitive finish in this fight um, against somebody like Watanabe. I, we're both two of the top best grapplers in the division. Haven't really seen too much of her defensive um, jiu-jitsu. Our, our ground games are very different. Even though we're like the top grapplers, it's very, very different. So um but like you said a knockout would be amazing i feel like i've never really got a real knockout uh except like the beginning of my career against the soccer mom but i don't really count that like i want a legit knockout you know so um yeah that would be that would be super cool especially in hawaii everybody loves everybody loves when we stand and bang so that would be amazing absolutely and what does the term legacy mean to you both professionally and personally um, so somebody asked me that this morning and I was started crying, but my legacy, I remember being asked this when I would first won the belt and I said that my legacy, I just wanted to make my parents proud no matter what happens in my career or in my life. I just want to make my parents proud of me because I think they're the best human beings in the world. So if my legacy uh, that, that remains the same. I just want to make my parents proud. Um, and I do want to be remembered more for what I do outside of the cage, because at the end of the day, I no longer value myself based on whether or not I have the belt based on what my fight record is. Um, I don't, I don't hold myself, um, to that anymore. Like I did when I was younger and I feel like I am very whole right now. And um, so, you know, the next, the next chapter of life is starting soon. And, and that is going to be probably one of the most important chapters of my life. So I want my legacy to be defined in that chapter um, post fighting in the cage. I appreciate your time and blessings and all your endeavors. Thank you. Hey, what's up, Lima? Over here. How you doing? Um, maybe a little bit. That's kind of has to do the same thing, but I'm just who knows what's going to happen. But this whole crazy MMA journey you've been on this whole time, um, what has it just meant to you? How has it kind of changed your life? Just what has this whole journey ultimately been like uh, to be on? It has been the most unexpected, crazy roller coaster I've ever experienced literally never thought I would fight literally walked into a gym on my way to work. I was waitressing at a little, little restaurant, walk past the gym. And I was just like, yeah, like this seems cool. Maybe I should start getting back into shape and walked in there, took my first class. Couldn't even make it through the warmups because I was so out of shape. We were like stretching and I was having a difficult time and I was like, ah, I gotta take a break. So, um, yeah, I just never in a million years thought that it would ever take me 
where it has. And I think that's what kind of like sets me apart from a lot of other fighters is that like, this was a total accident. Like I had, so I think it makes it almost easier to step away um, and to pursue really what I wanted to do before fighting kind of fell into my lap. So um, yeah, I, I think that this has been the most amazing journey ever. And I feel like I'm talking already, like I'm retiring this Saturday, which I'm not guys, I'm not retiring this Saturday. Um, but yeah, it, the most amazing, wonderful experience I've ever had. And then uh, Sumiko was in here talking just before you, and she's kind of at that point now where, you know, she's now fighting a ranked uh, opponent. There's a pathway towards maybe being getting a title shot one day. And it's kind of similar to kind of to what you did. I'm just wondering if you have what advice you would give her if she asked you for advice at this stage of her career on how to handle probably everything that's going to come uh, next for her. Oh, uh, I love Sumiko. I've been like giving her unsolicited advice this whole time. <laughs> I like message her. I'm like, okay, girl, you got to do this. You got to do that. And then when I found out she was fighting Vita, I was like, okay, here's my unsolicited advice about her. I fought her this. Da, 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 da. Um, so yeah, I think Sumiko is going to be amazing and she is definitely on that path. Now um, I feel like when it comes to Hawaii fighters and, and um, you know, Bellator Hawaii, all this, I would love to kind of like pass the torch on to her. Um, she would have paved her own way regardless if I was, I existed or not. She's incredible. She's an incredible fighter. Um, so yeah, she definitely would have made her own path. Um, but if I could give her advice, girl, just keep doing what you're doing. Um, if you need help with anything, let me know. And, um, yeah, I mean, she's killing it on her own. She really didn't need any advice from me. Right on. Thanks. Oh, but also post more. She needs to post more on social media. Thank you, Lima. Thank you. Thanks, guys.